Okay. And so that took care of the Dolphins and Lorenzo in Washington, who could have maybe used a quarterback, but all the things as they're gone, they do need a lot of things. Where are you going with this at number 19? Honestly, I think they're probably so bummed that Micah Parsons, Micah Parsons goes off the board right in front of them because if he's available, I think he has to be the pick, but um, with Nate taking him, um, I think that, uh they still need they need production out of the linebacker position there's there's no question they just have not had consistency there so I think you give them Jeremiah Wusu Koromora and you know he's not necessarily the biggest or most like physically gifted uh player you want at the position but um, you know, I think he's someone who's at least versatile. He can cover, he can help in the run game. He has at least enough range where he can go, um, all over the field and they need that. I mean, they're, they, they have a pretty solid group on the front, but behind them, they just, they really lack playmakers at that second level. So I think again, the Micah Parsons thing hurts because Micah Parsons would be just an excellent fit there. So I think they're happy with this, but not as happy as it could have been. Lorenzo, right. I'm proud you've taken your guy and forced you into taking a bump from Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I wanted to the, – the thing is, I have this draft board here, and I kept putting, like, Rashawn Slater was on there. Greg Newsom was down there for, like, later. I, and I keep going to, to players that from, my, uh, from the schools that I went to, and I'm like, well, people are going to think you're a homer here. But yeah, for, for our audience, Notre, Lorenzo is an Irish guy, so. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I went to school and I got all four of the Charlie Weiss years. <laughs> so that was that. All right. So Jory at number 20 with the Chicago Bears. I just wouldn't want to take anyone other than an offensive lineman and people think that we are losing interest in that position. So I think we're going to go Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. I also think that I mean, there, there are different ways we can address this. And, and in an ideal world, we would let Nate Davis and our colleague Nancy Armour go back to the 2017 draft and just start it from there rather than going to 2021. But that doesn't seem to be the reality we're operating in. So let's give, whether it's Andy Dalton or anyone else, a little bit of help in that offense in Chicago. And then perhaps a, a quarterback is coming soon and there will be a little more stability along that offensive line. And who'd you get? Who was it? Elijah Barry Tucker. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. All right, sorry, I was like busily scribbling here and lost it there, okay. <laughs> All right, so there's another lineman gone and the Indianapolis Colts are on the board at number 21. Um, and I feel like they need an offensive lineman as well uh, to protect Carson Wentz because Frank Reich knows that Wentz is at his best when he is being protected um, and a lot of good guys have gone, but I'm going to go Oklahoma State's Alex Leatherwood, I think. I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Alex Leatherwood from Alabama. Um, and uh, have him plug him in there and, and keep the quarterback up right. So another offensive lineman off the board, Tennessee Titans at 22, JB. And you're muted. As I was saying, uh, yeah, this would be a good trade spot if you want to move up to get like uh, Trey Lance. But anyway, uh, sticking with the board, um, they need an edge rusher, right? Okay, so I'll give them Quiddy Pay. Is that how you pronounce it, or is it Paye yeah. or I think it's from Michigan? Yeah, and so um, the Devion Clowney didn't quite work out for the Titans last year. Um, they could go receiver here as well, but I think if you can get uh, somebody for the trenches to rush the pass, so you could probably find a receiver a little bit later. So, and, it, and it's not like they coverage bear at receiver, right? So, yeah, let's go with the edge rusher for the Titans. Mike Vrabel, yeah, defense. There you go. All right, and Nate, you get to pick for your beloved Jets now um, for the first time since it kind of robbed you of that honor uh, at number two. There he goes with his Jets hat. Where are we going? Yeah, this is interesting. Um, you know, I, I was I was just about to, you know, J- JB pulled a Nate and took took my guy Quiddy Pay. Uh, you know, I was going to give Robert Sala a, a pass rusher there and try to help him recreate what he did 
uh, in San Francisco with, with uh, the rotation of guys up there. Um, you know, the Jets did get Carl Lawson free agency, which, which should help. Um, and, and there are there are other guys they, they could take here. You know, the, the Miami guys, Jalen Phillips, Greg Rousseau, uh, and, and others. But um, I, I'm going to go with with Najee Harris, the Alabama running back here at 23. Um, and, and you know, the Jets do pick again at 34. So some of these other guys, I think maybe they could, they could get a little later. Uh, but, but I think if you want the best running back in the draft, and that's what Najee Harris is in my estimation, um, he's probably not getting back past the Steelers right, right behind me at 24. And, and I think it's with almost Sam Darnold, the best way to maybe help a, a quarterback with Zach Wilson is to give him a running back who can both run the ball, who can pass protect, uh, and could catch a lot of balls out of the backfield. I mean, Najee Harris does it all. You know, he can bring to this team what Le'Veon Bell did not bring to this team. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to support my young quarterback and get a guy that I don't think is necessarily going to be there when I pick again at 34. Okay. All right. And um, now Pittsburgh at 24, MMS. Yeah, when you told us that you were randomizing the picks, my first thought for whatever reason was, please don't give me the Steelers. And, of course, here we are. And I say that because – I just have such a hard time reconciling what this team needs, which is offensive line. Seems like that is a, a more Steelers like move than taking a first round running back uh, with the fact that there's really not anyone on the board, especially as this uh, first round panned out uh, who is worthy of that spot. And then of course, Nate had to throw a wrench into it by taking Harris one spot ahead of me. So uh, this is a tough position. I, I think the, the best thing with Harris off the board is to take uh, Landon Dickerson from Alabama, the center. Uh, he's not the you know franchise blindside left tackle, uh, and he has the torn ACL that he's recovering from, but uh, he very much fits the profile of uh, a Kevin Colbert pick. And uh, I think that if Harris is off the board, then – I think it's too hard for them to look at other running backs and they really need to look at uh, the offensive linemen that are available. Uh, and they may have to do that even if Harris is available. Yeah. You know, I really, I, I kind of wondered if they would try to jump up to draft a quarterback. Um, you know, if one of these guys started to slide because they don't really have a real successor for big Ben, but I agree with you that, you know, getting an offensive lineman right now for big Ben might be more important. Uh, maybe we can get a guy in the second round um, to, to help address that. Or, I mean, I guess there's a chance that Dwayne Haskins could develop or, or you know, uh, but I like that pick of going offensive line since all the quarterbacks um, are out the way there, but there are still some, some, you know, talented quarterbacks, just not the elite level guys. So um, we'll see how that plays out. And now uh, Jacksonville, is on the board again at number 25 and Lorenzo get that pick. This is a really, really interesting spot. I think because with Trevor locked in, I think urban Meyer is going to want to say, well, do we give him weapons? Do we protect them with an offensive lineman? Um, or do we build maybe um, bolster our defensive line, which has had a lot of departures uh, over the past couple of seasons. So I, I could see them going in so many ways, but, with Trevor being the pick, I really think that Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss is a fit here. He can play in the slot. He's, um, you know, obviously athletic enough to, to, I think you could plug him in right away. And I could see him maybe dropping a little bit after this, but, um, you know, I, I just think once, once you have Trevor in the building, you're going to want to put pieces around him and uh, the Jaguars, they just, they've lacked some, some talent at the skill position. So I'm kind of conflicted here though. I could be talked out of this, but I feel like if you want some sizzle, you got Trevor, mm -hmm. give him at least a weapon he could play with. Agree. Agree. All right. Jory and the Cleveland Browns at number 26. Yeah. I think that I am excited to see about what the defenseman Jalen Phillips could do with Miles Garrett in Cleveland. I think that there's so much potential for how they could wreck from either side of the defensive line. And at the same point, I think that when you look like at a guy like Phillips, who both physically and in different ways ha has had some ups and downs in his career, I actually think not to give Miles Garrett too much credit because there have been some really troubling incidents as someone like Miles who came in with what seemed to be like a very strong character, but had a setback and had to really reckon with that could be 
a good mentor for him in Cleveland. Pair that with an offense that really has a lot of talents and a organization that I think is just stabler than it's been in, in decades. And I like what Jalen Phillips could do there. And I mean, he's a guy that, I mean, that's pretty, I think that's good value there at 26, yeah. um, you know, cause he's a guy that could have possibly go in the teens, um, you know, maybe, um, but that's, that that's good there. And I mean, they have Clowney, but we can't count on really Clowney on holding up. So getting another. Uh, and he's just a year and the New York Giants have always taught us that you can't have enough pass rushers. Right. And I think when you've got Lamar in the division, and if you want to get where you want to go as the Browns, I mean, you're going to have to get past Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. I think that that he will really help bring them to the next level, taking down those foes. So, slay the beasts. All right. And so now at 27 is the Baltimore Ravens on the clock. I'm picking for them. And um, I feel like they need a pass rusher as well. They, they lost guys in free agency. Um, I'm going to go with George's Aziz and I can always struggle to pronounce him Ajilari. Um, but I feel like he is a guy that can come in there. He, he's got great athleticism, um, great body. Um, you know, maybe he's not quite as tall or long as some guys, but I just really think that he's going to be a guy that's going to um, make a lot of uh, cause a lot of damage in the NFL. So the, the uh, they definitely need pass rushers in their offense. I mean, their their defense. They've got uh, good guys up front in their defensive line to cause pressure for offenses. Uh, but and they've got good guys in the secondary. They need pass rushers. So that's my pick there uh, for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And that brings us to number twenty eight, the Saints and JB. Yeah. <clears throat> so run on pass rushers, huh? Um, something just tells me it makes just keep popping in my mind um with the saints and obviously trey lance is long gone now mm -hmm. but when we talk about people teams that might want to move up for a trey lance i wouldn't rule out the saints of course like i said he's not here right now but we've got lance going to denver they obviously need a, a quarterback there but this might not be the saints pick before when we get to Thursday night, maybe they've moved up to get Trey Lance. But for the purposes of this exercise, uh, yeah, JB, remember remember that Sean Payton was apparently going to go get Patrick Mahomes in 2017, and then he got he got jumped. So they, they could do it again. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that I think um, knowing their situation right now, obviously a guy who might take a couple of years to develop. I think that would be a perfect spot for him. So that would be the one team that I would say, okay, maybe this is one not to, you know, to completely um, sleep on. But back to the pass rusher thing, they need one of those too. So now I'm going to do a major reach because I like Phillips. Jury stole that pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I liked him there, but the Saints lost Trey Hendrickson and, you know, Cam Jordan's not getting any younger. Um, so I'll, I'll make, maybe this is a reach, but I, I'm intrigued by Gregory um, Roussard. Roussard, Roussard? Yeah, the guy from Miami, Roussard. Miami, uh, I'm sure you're fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put him there. I mean, what the heck? Um, and yeah, reaching, that's, that's kind of what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> in this draft war room, we reach, okay? <laughs> so uh, that's my pick for the Saints, just uh, knowing that they need uh, an impact player on the front seven. Okay, big board export, expert MMS, what do you think? Is that a big reach there? I think based on his value uh, a little bit, um, I think the Saints are a good team just in that, you know, they can afford to gamble a little bit on his upside. I mean, Rousseau is just a guy who's hard to pin down because he was so promising as a, in his, in 2019, uh, his lone year in college, 15 and a half sacks. Uh, but he's a guy who's a former high school wide receiver in safety who, when you watch him, I mean, he's basically just using his length and he's especially, you know, just kind of going and crashing inside and beating college guards and centers. And he's not really, you know, beating offensive tackles in the way you'd expect a defensive end would. So I think he has to come up with a little bit more of a pass rush plan. He has to get more powerful because he's not going to be able to just kind of will his way past these guys with his, uh, you know, long arms uh, the way he did in college. 
I think uh, returning last year would have, you know, really helped him, um, uh, you know, playing opposite Phillips and Quincy Roche. Um, but I, I think that there's, you know, a, a solid shot that he ends up in the first round. It wouldn't surprise me if he slid to the second but you look at those teams like the Saints and Buccaneers, and yeah, they're probably in a little bit more of a better position to, you know, bet on his upside for the long term. Okay. Smart, super smart kid, too, and he's working with Chuck Smith, so I think he's going to work out a lot of these technique issues. Um, and, and when you're playing with a super smart guy like Cam Jordan, you know, that can only help your career get off to a good start, I think. All right, and so you're actually on the clock now for the uh, Packers MMS. What are you going there? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers might not be happy with me after this, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to give them uh, a linebacker in uh, Tulsa's Zayvon Collins. Uh, look, I mean, the Packers have to draft a wide receiver somewhat early here. They don't, all of their wide receivers are set to be free agents in 2022. So that just for the sake of getting someone in there to, you know, give them some, you know, even level on their uh, calendar. Uh, they need to find someone. Uh, but I think they can do that on day two. And I think we've seen how just the lack of athleticism in the middle of that defense has cost them in big spots. Uh, and Collins is a guy who's great in coverage. He's very big, but he's in, not exactly a thumper. He has, you know, I think untapped pass rushing potential based on how Tulsa used him. Uh, so I would go with him here. I don't think that there's a wide receiver worthy of it. I was, uh, looking at Elijah Moore a little bit, but, uh, he obviously went, uh, earlier in the draft to Jacksonville. So I think at this spot, I will go with Collins. Okay. Before we move on, I just want to make sure while MMS is still on the clock, are you sure, even though some of the quarterbacks are gone, that there's not a quarterback you want to go with for the Packers? I, I, I'm not going to make Aaron Rodgers that upset. <laughs> he would go nuts. <laughs> right, and it might be worth it for that reason alone. Seriously. Like, it's, not about, it's not about the game of football. This is for the purpose of Jeopardy fans everywhere. <laughs> there we go. I just right. love, just quickly, how they draft a quarterback in the first round and he just goes off and wins the MVP <laughs> the following season. I mean, how incredible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Number 30, Buffalo Bills, Nate Davis, where are you going? Yeah, my, my role for the uh, AFC East concludes here, I guess. Um, you know, you know, this is a team I'm not sure really needs anything. Uh, you know, they, they come up obviously short against the Chiefs in the AFC, and you could argue that they're the second or third best team in the conference. Um, I, I was looking at Greg Rousseau here as well. I think they could get more out of their pass rush. I'm tempted by Javante Williams, North Carolina running back, because uh, Bill's best running back last year was Josh Allen. Um, but I'm going to go back to, to value here um, you know, on the board and take Virginia Tech cornerback uh, Caleb Farley. Um, you know, he's, he's had the, the, the multiple back surgeries over the years. But, you, you know, if, if you're comfortable with his medical, um, and, and this, this most recent one is, is maybe not as scary a back surgery, uh, as some, you know, you're probably getting the best cornerback on the board here. Uh, you don't necessarily have to rush him out and play him week one. Um, you, you know, if he needs a little bit more time to recover, you know, you got Tredavious White and other guys there. But uh, I, th I think if you're looking at value, um, you can never have enough corners. And if I can get the best one without pressure to play him right away, if, if, if he's not ready, uh, I'm, I'm OK with that. So I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Caleb Harley. It's going to be interesting to see how guys like him, other guys with injury, how they make out in this because they didn't get to have the medicals. I mean, all the extensive examinations like they would have um, in a normal year. They did have the the best the, the medical exam day um, in Indy where they all went to, but it, it wasn't um, as extensive. So guys with injuries could slide a little bit. Um, and but I think that, you know, he would work well in that defense um, and definitely Drew, last Drew Rosenhaus says he's getting picked in the middle of the first round and I, Drew wouldn't lie about that right <laughs> this is a steal for me there you go all right Baltimore Ravens when that uh, pick they got from the Chiefs uh, just recently there Lorenzo who are you picking at 31 so quickly Alex Leatherwood is off the board yeah yes Ted Jenkins is off the board too yes man all right um that's tough because I think those are the two players I was I was eyeing here. Um, they're both pretty solid in the run game. You trade Orlando Brown, you obviously you want you want to find his replacement um, at right tackle. And I don't, I 
I feel like that's the direction they will go here. But with Baltimore now not picking until 94, I could actually see them trading out of the spot maybe because if this is the way the board sets up, I'm tempted to go with receiver or offensive tackle. I'm kind of talking this out as I'm looking at it here. Um, oof. I hope Lorenzo, you forfeited your pick and the Buccaneers are on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was that when we put this on the USA Today website, the headline is like USA Today stack collectively picks like NFL record high offensive line in the first round. So yeah. we're going to yeah, there's there the headline that, that we're all looking for. <laughs> With that in mind, Jory, I will I will not. I will not. I was looking at so I was looking at Walker Little Little out of Stanford, but it's it's interesting. He had a he had a season ending injury 2019. He opted out 2020. There really isn't a lot of film on him. I think Baltimore, they have a track record of developing offensive line then, but I'm gonna go with Kadarius Tony, the receiver out of Florida. Um I just feel like, again, if this is the way the board shapes up, um, I, I like the ability of, uh, it's just, I don't want to reach for an offensive lineman here. Um, and I feel like Lamar Jackson could use some more weapons. Um, and while the receiver class has, at this point, a lot of players are off the board, um, you know, I just, I think that adding a weapon like this, he's undersized, he has some injury issues, but um yeah i think he just has that lateral shiftiness where he can just shed defenders um and you can plug him in the slot and i think that helps lamar right away so i'll go with tony all right and to wrap it up tampa bay buccaneers and jory number 32 yeah, we're going to give them Joe Tryon out of Washington. I think that really upgrade that defense. What I like about him is that he's I mean, the more they can continue to do with their front, the more they're going to be able to help what's a really exciting back group of linebackers and cornerbacks. On top of that, he opted out. So you might want to give him a little bit of time to, to shake any rust off. And what better way to do that than behind guys like Shaq Barrett, Jason Pierre-Paul. Um, I think that you don't know what JPP is going to do next offseason. This creates that depth automatically. And, and really, they can't go so wrong because they just have so many people returning. But I think that that would be a good way to give them some defensive stability, really, for the next several years on that front. All right. And there's our first round. Interesting. Obviously, we knew quarterbacks would go. A lot of offensive linemen, pass rushers, not a lot of defensive backs. Um, we got a number of wide receivers gone. Uh, any uh, last in impressions? Anybody from uh, uh, how this shook out for us? Mm. The thing about this draft, Mike, is the way that Zach Wilson is getting compared to Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes, and Mac Jones is getting compared to Tom Brady, and Trevor Lawrence is getting compared to Justin Herbert. So I have no idea why the board falls the way it does, but this, 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 this should be a very interesting draft. It just tells you the how ridiculous making comparisons to these players, who you, who you know very little about, right. uh, what, what that's worth. But you yeah. know, the, the whole Tom Brady thing, yes, you hear it, but I heard from some people like, yeah, more like Matt Hasselbeck. Um, you know, for Mac Jones, yeah. uh, which could be interesting, you know, and I mean, you and know, you hear you Kirk Cousins really... and Matt, Matt Ryan too with the whole 49ers. Yeah. And I'm like, who's trading three first round picks for those guys? You know? Right. Yeah. But if you're Kyle and you really want to get your guy, um, yeah. I mean, he, he was very creative with RG three, but he really liked how Cousins ran his offense, you know, um, you know, they, they made sure they got a, a stable guy to go behind RG three. So but I'm with you. I'm, I'm with Fields. I mean, none of those guys have, have, have gone anywhere at the, at the end of the day, and you lost to a quarterback that could do more in the Super Bowl because Patrick Mahomes could do more. So get a guy like Justin Fields that can do more than just run your offense, that he can do something when the offense breaks down, right? So Yeah, in, in this environment of smoke screens and stuff, yeah, I'm still not feeling that the 49ers traded to the third spot for Mac Jones, okay? I, I just have a hard time believing that. So I think Fields okay. might be that guy that they really target, but going a pick earlier to the Jets, Nate, your Jets. I mean, I'm still not sold on Zach Wilson yeah. either. Yeah. I mean, it's like, why all of a sudden, Trevor Lawrence, we know, can't argue that one really, but Zach Wilson, I, I, I've not seen enough college football to know any better, but just on what I have seen and what I have heard and 
the history of quarterbacks, I'm like really feeling like the Jets could screw this one up again. So if you yeah, like the Jets. <laughs> I mean, he's got, he's already got an injury history, JB, including a shoulder. Um, you know, he, he played against, you know, say what you want about what he does in the field and some of the throws are spectacular and he's mobile and he can, he can make those Mahomes esque throws if you want that, but he's not, he's not doing it against the sec uh, or, or anyone like that. And, you, you know, I, I, I think a lot of this, this, this decision is financial and it's getting the rookie quarterback back and be, having them on, on, on rookie wage scale for five years and you build up the rest of it. You know, Robert Sala saw that at work, that work. Well, I guess not with Garoppolo, but I mean, you, you see the big supporting cast around the 49ers when Garoppolo isn't necessarily the highest paid guy uh, in, in the league. But I, I really thought the Jets would have been better served to trade out of this pick, get a bunch of great picks, get a premium player a little bit down the board. And support Sam Darnold, who I thought was a good player that just never really got a fair shake there because they never supported him with any good players. I, I would have done that too, JB. This is just my two cents. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that one with Sam Darnold. I mean, my goodness, give the guy a shot. That's I did right. give him Rashawn Slater. For sure. Yeah, like you said, Nate, yeah, <laughs> trade down, get some um, some more picks and, and a premium player. But all that's water under the bridge now as far as Sam Darnold's concerned, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this one shakes out in time. Yeah. The thing with Wilson, too, is that he played behind a pretty good offensive line that gave him all the time in the world. And if you watch his film, he's just kind of sitting back there waiting for stuff to happen. And then he has the arm strength and he can whip it down the field where he's like, okay, a guy's going to be open. He just slings it down there. Yeah. I think that's going to be a tough transition um, when he gets to the NFL and then when he gets some floor and park, especially because that roster just – no. Yeah. That's and one of the concerns that people your, hey, had. Yeah. That's yeah, one of the and, concerns and, that people had is that, you know, he kind of plays small in the pocket, you know, um, when it's collapsing around him. He can move around and get out of it and make great plays, but I don't know. Yeah. And like a Jimmy Garoppolo, is this guy going to stay healthy? I mean, is he really durable enough? Um, we'll see. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Well, I really want to thank you guys for taking time to join me here um, on the podcast um, and, and this mock draft. This is a lot of fun, um, you know, and uh, of course, all of our picks are going to be spot on and everybody can thank us on uh, Thursday night for uh, telling them how it's going to go so they could go to bed early. So, all right. Thank you guys. I will see you. Appreciate you, Mike. All right. Thanks. Thanks, man.